On Saturday, March 2nd, the day that this video is coming out, there is going to be an international day of action for Palestine. It's been over 140 days of this ongoing genocide in Palestine, and increasingly the world is starting to see that what's happening is not war, is not conflict, is not complicated. It is genocide. However, the United States has remained staunchly on the side of Israel, saying that they have a right to defend themselves, as if this could possibly be classified as self-defense. Now, if you're relatively new to what's going on in Palestine, if you're watching my channel and you're like, hey, I'm here for the neurodivergent content, what is this about? Um, I just want to take a second to say that this is a neurodivergent issue. There are autistic people in Gaza. <laughs> there are people with ADHD in Gaza. There and trauma is a huge part of neurodivergence and what's happening in Palestine is going to traumatize generations. That's the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand about what's going on in Palestine. They see it as a political issue or as an issue for Middle Eastern folks or an issue for religious folks, perhaps. But they don't see it as a parenting issue, a neurodivergent issue, a self-care issue. They don't see it as any of those things. And so they don't think that they have to speak on it or, you know, their opinion doesn't matter. But I disagree with that because the thing is, the only reason I'm not in Palestine right now is because of the lottery of my birth. I happened to be born in the United States, but I could have been born anywhere. And had I been born in Gaza, and if I were living there right now, it would be hell on earth for a million reasons. And some of those reasons would include my autism and ADHD. This is a neurodivergent issue. There are neurodivergent people everywhere, including at the site of an ongoing genocide. So if you think that this doesn't pertain to you, or if you think it's just way over your head, I do understand that. You know, when all of this started back in October, I thought this is complicated. There's a huge long history here that I know nothing about, and I'm not qualified to tell anyone how they should defend themselves or how they should, you know, get their land back or anything like I'm just not qualified. And so I thought I would just stay out of it. But then it just kept going. This conflict didn't resolve in 30 days or 60 days or 140 days. It just kept going. And the more it went on, the inequality of what was happening became incredibly stark. You know, on the one hand, we see videos from Gaza of children literally starving to death on camera, not because of a natural famine, but because of the cutting off of resources. And on the other hand, we see videos in Israel of soldiers collecting the underwear of women of houses that they've raided. This disparity is just one reason that what's going on is not a war and what's going on is, yes, complicated, but not too complicated to learn about. Yeah, there's a long history when it comes to Israel and Palestine, but that doesn't mean we can't learn about that history. That history is fairly well documented. And so it's our job as this genocide unfolds, not to withhold our attention and withhold our involvement as if, oh, it's just too complicated, I just couldn't possibly. Our job is to say, oh, this is so complicated, I better dive in. And that's what I've been really trying to do. Now, I don't know everything, so far from it. I, I definitely don't know everything, but I am trying my best to listen to people who know a heck of a lot more than I do. I will go ahead and tag some of the accounts that I've been learning from in the description below, and I really encourage you to follow them as well. Additionally, if you decide that you do want to be involved, you do want to take action on March 2nd, the day of action for Palestine, uh, there are so many ways to do so. First of all, there are over 83 marches organized around the world on March 2nd. I think there's three or four in my state alone. However, I understand that for a lot of neurodivergent people or otherwise disabled people, attending a march is not always the best or most accessible option. In that case, I really encourage you to post about the day of action so that people for whom going to a march is accessible know about it and can go. Another action you can take is learning. Learning about Palestine and its history. There's a really great completely free resource called the Palestine Academy. I'll link to it below and I highly recommend checking that out. 
On a related note, you don't just have to learn about the history if you're not much of a history buff, although I do think it's important to have at least a basic understanding of how we got to this situation. You can also learn about the culture, you know, read Palestinian poets, look at Palestinian art, listen to Palestinian music. Another action you can take is contacting your representatives, especially if you live in a country that has not supported a ceasefire, which I believe is literally only the United States at this point. Uh, but you can call your representatives, email them, fax them, send them postcards. We just want to be as obnoxious as possible. And if you need help knowing what to say to your representatives on a phone call or in a postcard, I actually have a whole script that was updated as of February 22nd. So it's a little out of date potentially now, but um, it should still be pretty relevant. Um, and you can check that out on my Instagram. I will link that reel in the description as well. Finally, one last action you can take is actually sort of an inaction, um, and that is boycotting. Now, I know that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, okay? I'm highly aware of that fact. But there are some companies who very, very strongly support Israel. And it's okay to let those companies know that you're not okay with that. Thankfully, you don't actually have to do a lot of research on which companies support Israel and which don't and everything because there's already a movement called the BDS movement, Boycott, Divest, and Sanction movement. They have a whole Instagram page and a website where they update the uh, companies that we are actively trying to boycott um, in order to send a message about their support for Israel. You may have heard about the Starbucks boycott or the Disney boycott, and all of those are considered unofficial boycotts or organic boycotts, according to the BDS movement. They aren't the specific companies that the BDS movement is calling for boycotts for. However, they agree that it's good to put pressure on these companies in order to maybe get them to shift their perspective or to take a different stance. However, some of the main companies BDS is calling us to boycott are companies like Remax, SodaStream, Puma, and more. And the last thing I want to leave you with is a really beautiful tweet that I saw that was shared by Ozma Therapist. Highly recommend you go follow them. I will link them in the description. Um, and I will link this tweet specifically from hungover underscore the. <laughs> and this is what it says. A friend once shared what she called the parable of the choir. A choir can sing a beautiful note impossibly long because singers can individually drop out to breathe as necessary, and the note goes on. Social justice activism should be like that, she said. That stuck with me. So what I wanna say in regards to that tweet is it's okay if you need a minute. It's okay if you need a breather, but use that minute, use that breather to come back to the work instead of to avoid it. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, free Palestine.